In this short video, we're going to walk through the World War II propaganda example that I created to highlight the different elements that can be used in a blended digital learning template using the Google Suite. I would like to point out that I'm also using an article from PBS. I'm using a bit.ly link, as you'll notice, it's bit.ly slash blended DL template to easily access a view only um, version of this template that you can copy. And in addition, we're also using a Nearpod lesson that I've used in the past. Uh, Nearpod is a resource that can be used to create an interactive lesson. And I also used the snipping tool quite a bit. So let me walk through this for you. Uh, if you ever need any assistance, you can always contact me or reach out to your technology coach at your school, and they can walk you through similar ways to address this um, type of lesson. You'll notice that I used a table and as I scan down here, you'll see that each row is a different resource. The purpose of that is to allow the pagination to work and for it to be a little more pleasing to the eye as we go through this. One of the things you need to do afterwards is remember to go up to Tools and go to Table or go down here and go to t uh, right click and go down to Table Properties. Either way, it'll take you to an opportunity to change the table border to white and that gets rid of those lines and then the student's experience is a little more streamlined. So let's begin. The first thing I would do is I would go through and I would offer some information regarding the lesson. I would give some background information. And if this were an actual lesson, I'd probably give a little more in terms of vocabulary and prior knowledge. I might also link this to the state standards so that the learner or their family can understand why we're doing what we're doing. Of course, you don't have to have every element in this lesson, but I used this opportunity to show the different things that you could include. So one of the things that we have is we have a Nearpod lesson that introduces us to the vocabulary word propaganda, and it goes into a little more information about what propaganda is. The way I created this was I went over here to Nearpod, and I went to, we'll start here, I went to the snipping tool and I click on new, and it gives me a chance to start at one corner and go down to the next corner. You'll notice it only takes like but it's maybe six seconds. And that creates an image that I can click on copy and then I can paste it in my document. So you'll see that I did that throughout. In this case specifically, what I did was I came up here and I found the link and I used this link and embedded it in this image. So if a student clicks on this image, I'll scroll down a little bit, you'll see there's the link. So that when they click on that link, it will take them to that Nearpod lesson. Continuing on, there are also videos associated with this lesson, but before they read, they watch the videos, I'd like them to read an article. So I did the same thing. I took a screenshot of this PBS article, and then when they click on it, they'll see a link that they can click on to go through the article. We also have two YouTube videos here placed side by side, embedded into the Google document. And this completes the stimulus portion of the lesson. So I ended up with an interactive lesson for them to learn a little bit more about propaganda and some of the background surrounding it. I gave them an article to discuss propaganda and then I gave them two videos to bolster their understanding from either side of the equation. At the end of this, I give them an opportunity to reflect with a Google form, World War II propaganda reflection. And when they click on this, it will take them to the Google form that I created. The nice thing about this is that it is open-ended, so the students have a chance to reflect. Um, I'm going to assume that there are already class norms in place, or there may be a lesson uh, before the hand talking about digital citizenship to ensure that students are going to use effective communication strategies and also make sure that they're actually discussing the article and not going off on tangents. Uh, the other thing you can do in here is you can create a quiz or you can create some sort of assessment in addition to open-ended answers. The cool thing is, in the lower right-hand corner, you'll notice I've got a little uh, pencil here. That's because I'm the person that created this form. If you're a teacher and you've used this before, you know where I'm going with this. When I click on Responses and click over here on uh, Create Spreadsheet, it would create a spreadsheet for me where I would be able to read the responses pretty simplistically. If I have Google Classroom, it also makes it a little bit easier for me, but I'm assuming that we don't have that necessarily. Google Classroom allows us to document different things and also to keep things uh, pretty well organized by student. The other thing I have is Google Groups, which of course Google Classroom, you could embed the discussion a little bit differently. But if you don't have access to that, the Google Groups link would take them to a group discussion where they can have a discussion about what they're doing.